Task number six, filtering. This task is part of the upload vulnerabilities module inside Complete Beginner Path on TryHackMe. Up until now, we have largely been ignoring the counter defenses employed by web developers to defend against file upload vulnerabilities. Every website that you've successfully attacked so far in this room has been completely insecure. It's time that changed from here on out. We'll be looking at some of the defenses mechanisms used to prevent malicious file uploads and how to circumvent them. First up, let's discuss the differences between client-side filtering and server-side filtering. When we talk about a script being client-side in the context of web applications, we mean that it's running in the user browser as opposed to on the web server itself. JavaScript is pretty much ubiquitous as the client-side scripting language, although alternatives do exist. Regardless of the language being used, a client-side script will be run in the, your web browser. In the context of file uploads, this means that the filtering occurs before the file is even uploaded to the server. Theoretically, this would seem like a good thing, right? In an ideal world, it would be. However, because the filtering is happening on our computer, it is trivially easy to bypass. As such, client-side filtering by itself is a highly insecure method of verifying that an uploaded file is not malicious. Conversely, as you may be guessed, a server-side script will be run on the server. Traditionally, PHP has the predominant server-side language, with Microsoft's ASP for IIS coming in a close second. However, in, re in recent years, other Options such as C Sharp, Node.js, Python, Ruby on Rails, and a variety of others have become more widely used. Server-side filters tends to be more difficult to bypass as you don't have to code in front of you. So you don't have the code, right? For a server-side script, you don't see the code, right? Like you see on the client side. As the code is executed on the server, in most cases, it will also be impossible to bypass the filter completely. Instead, we have to form a payload which confirms, which conforms to the filters in place, but still allows us to execute our code. With that in mind, let's take a look at some different kinds of filters. Extension validation, right? Basically, we just validate that the file we upload is uh, has the extension that we want. File extensions are used in theory to identify the contents of a file. In practice, they are very easy to change, so actually don't mean much. However, MS Windows, still uses them in identifying file types, although Unix-based systems tend to rely on other methods, which we'll cover in a bit. Filters that check the, for extensions work in one of two ways. They either blacklist extensions, that is, have a list of extensions which are not allowed, or they whitelist ext extensions, that is, have a list of extensions which are allowed, and reject everything else. File type filtering. Similar to extension validation, but more intensive, file type filtering looks once again to verify that the content of a file are acceptable to upload. We'll be looking at two types of file type validation. MIME validation, multiple purpose internet mail extension types are used as an identifier for files originally when transferred as attachments over email, but not also when files are being transferred over HTTPS or HTTP. The MIME type for a file upload is attached in the header of the request and looks something like this. Content type image JPEG. As you can see, the header is attached. MIME types follow the format type and then subtype. In the request above, you can see that the image spaniel.jpg was uploaded to the server as a legitimate JPEG image. The MIME type for the file upload was image JPEG. The MIME type for a file can be checked client side or and or server side. However, as MIME is based on the extension of the file, this is extremely easy to bypass. Magic number validation, magic number Magic numbers are the more accurate way to determining the contents of a file, although they are by no means impossible to fake. The magic number of a file is a string of bytes at the very beginning of the file content, which identified the content. For example, a PNG file would have these bytes at the very top of the file. And here we can see the bytes for this PNG example. 
Unlike Windows, Unix systems use magic numbers for identifying files. However, when dealing with file uploads, it is possible to check the magic number of the uploaded file to ensure that it is safe to accept. This is by no means guaranteed solution, but it's more effective than checking the extension of a file. File length filtering. File length filters are used to prevent huge files from being uploaded to the server via an upload form, as this, this potentially starves the server of resources. In most cases, this will not cause us any issues when we upload shells. However, it's worth bearing in mind that it, if an upload form only accepts a very small file to be uploaded, there may be a length file filter. There may be a length filter in place to ensure that the file length requirement is adhered to. As an example, our fully fledged PHP reverse shell from the previous task is 5.4 kilobytes big, relatively tiny. But if the form expects a maximum of two kilobytes, then we would need to find an alternative shell to upload. File name filtering. As touched upon previously, file uploads to a server should be unique. Usually this would mean adding or a random aspect to the file name. However, an alternative strategy would be to check if a file with the same name already exists on the server and give the user an error if so. Additionally, file names should be sanitized on upload to ensure that they don't contain any bad characters, which could potentially cause problems on the file system when uploaded. For example, null bytes or forward slashes on Linux, as well as control characters such as semicolon and potentially Unicode characters. What this means for us is that on a well-administered system, our upload files are unlikely to have the same name we gave them before uploading, so be aware that you may have to go hunting for your shell in the event that you manage to bypass the content filtering. File content filtering. More complicated filters systems may scan the full content of an upload file to ensure that it's not spoofing its extension. Type, mime type and magic numbers. This is a significantly more complex process than the majority of basic filtration system employed and thus this will not be covered in this room. Spoofing its extension, basically just changing extension. It's worth noting that uh, spoofing its extension, basically just tricking the system that we have another extension. Tricking the system that we have the extension needed. It's worth noting that none of these filters are perfect by themselves. They will usually be used in conjunction with, with each other, providing a multi-layered filter, thus increasing the security of the upload significantly. Any of these filters can all be applied client-side, server-side, or both. Similarly, different frameworks and languages come with the, their own inherent methods of filtering and validating uploaded files. As a result, it is possible for a language-specific exploit to appear. For example, until PHP Major version 5, it was possible to bypass an extension filter by appending a null byte followed by a valid extension to the malicious.php file. More recently, it was also possible to inject PHP code into the EXIF data of an otherwise valid image file, then force the server to execute it. There are things that you are welcome to research further, should you be interested. Answer the questions below. What is the traditional predominant server-side script language? Server-side is PHP. When validating by file extension, what would you call a list of accepted extensions? whereby the server rejects any extension not in the list. That's whitelist. Research, what MIME type would you expect to see when uploading a CSV file? MIME or CSV. Text, here it is, text forward slash CSV. Pretty intense research. <laughs> 